4.0 is now live. I could have probably set you up. Let me just. Um, oh, he's waiting. <laughs> he is. Okay. Hi, Renell. Um, can you make me a um, co host or something? Um, can I see participants? Um, promote to panelist. I promoted you to a panelist. Um, can't see how to add you to this morning. You were all on um, co host. <laughs> You're having dinner there. <laughs> Chips, that's very healthy. Crackers. Yeah, yeah, we got dinner coming later. I missed lunch. Yeah, it's been one of those. We had how many? Five demos, four demos today. Oh, really? Mm. That's good. It's good for you guys. <laughs> really? Yeah. And from this morning was really good. We had one sale. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. We did. Um, Melissa. Yeah, Melissa. So, sorry, I just need to tell these guys that I'm about to go on. Is that really my last chip? Uh, Hailey? Hailey? <laughs> Hailey? All right, I've got my PowerPoint there. That's good. Um, does your PowerPoint, does this PowerPoint have the, the graphs and the data in it? Yeah. It does, okay. Because if you could spend some time on that, that would be fantastic. Yeah. I mean, we we didn't spend a huge amount of time. We've got no data in it, but that's all good. But I was really amazed that, um, yeah, they managed to even get the data out of that. I mean, because I think they had sorted it by time. I can't remember. The yeah, so line. it's just, um, what have we got? Distance distance via yeah time the dates in a bit of long form um but this one yeah so yeah and that was just straight from the data that was just straight from the there so there was no sensor data on that that's just the robots tracking well essentially the sensors because you're right, sensing yeah. the on board the distance traveled yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was it. So a, how do they calculate? Ah, oh, okay. So they're just using the amount of distance that was traveled over time. I'm not yeah. sure of the unit. It must be centimeters. Like centimeters, yeah. 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 Oops, yeah. I'll just turn the screen off. There we go. And I'll stop sharing that now. Yeah, absolutely. We can talk about that. Mm. Yeah, and even some of the code. I mean, it's a really cool project. There's um guys have done really well. Oh, we've got Sunny Hill School on as well. Let me add. Sunny Hill. Hi, Angela. Hey. Hiya. How are you? Uh, not too bad. Good. You're all a little bit early, so you can just relax. <laughs> so um, I think um, Angela, they, Sunny Hills uh, also um, submitted, eh? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Awesome. Hi, Angela. I think we have met. I think we have met. Yeah. 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 Cool. I'll tell you, uh, you know, but um, I must say, I've uh, been a bit, um, I don't know, emotional, but it's too soft for a man to say that. But uh, really seeing, uh, I mean, Shelly's PowerPoints and all these other PowerPoints coming through and um, seeing what kids are creating from the product that I, you know, came up with, from the idea that I came up with about three years ago. So, 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, it's pretty amazing to see that the outcome of that. Absolutely. The dog's just giving me his haul. <laughs> That's the noise. I was wondering what's going on. And did he kick a robot over? I don't know, but it was very noisy. Sorry. Sure, my PowerPoint is ready. Next year is going to be really, um, while we're waiting, really exciting to, um, my notification is very loud, Chris. <laughs> um, next year when we do the chess challenge, um, that's going to be really, oh, really awesome. Wow. We've got a, um, one of our teachers has started up a chess club at school this year. So we can <laughs> get on board with them once we've yeah. worked it, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be very, very, very good. Um, because then we can um, have some New Zealand schools. I know we've got about four Australian schools. That's really keen. Yeah. They've got the chess clubs as well. And then in the States, they've got a massive, massive following. So, um, and they bring it into the curriculum, which is really, really interesting. Um, yeah. You know, it's obviously... Um, I don't know, it won't be computational thinking, but it's um, of course I don't. No. problem solving and all of that, um, that, um, yeah, they do chess as part of the curriculum. Yeah, that's awesome. Which is awesome. And that was really good talking about um, the, you know, the um, outcomes, the curriculum outcomes. Um, yeah, and, um, we'll see how we go. I know Angela, you know, she's done the same um, yep. at Sunny Hills and, and wrote about that as well. So, um, Angela, I may come across and ask you a question as well. At the oh, end. Yes, no worries. <laughs> yeah, of course. It'd be awesome to see what some other schools have. Um, yeah, eventually we'll, um, you know, pop all of them up. Um, they yeah. just now out for judging, which is yeah. really good. Um, we've scaled them down. Um, we had a lot of entries and we've just um, took sort of the top 10. Yeah. Um, both of you are in there, I may say mm -hmm. that. <laughs> um, <laughs> very, 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 very good, in, very good entries. Yeah. So, um, Maybe Angela, we can catch her on the spot and uh, um, put her put her on and share a PowerPoint. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it. I've got the PowerPoint. Quickly. <laughs> oh, okay. oh. You got about five seconds. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Lovely to see you there as well and see some familiar faces here, which is really good. A couple more minutes. So Not where's that uh, made from? Egypt. From oh, all the way from Egypt. Oh. Hmm. I'll just uh, pull it out on Twitter quickly. Of. funny with glasses um, yeah. you know, I've just um, um, we've just bought some ring those ring lights for the office yeah and they're really 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 good but it gives you really freaky eyes because <laughs> <laughs> you see the white ring uh, yeah. eyes <laughs> to 
get some of those contact lenses my daughter is into, you know, doing all strange um, Halloween costumes and things like that. So um, oh, yeah. she wears different contact lens colors. Lens, yeah. yeah. They're very pretty. Ooh. Okay. Hi, Christopher. Um, where, where, please, can you introduce yourself and let us know where you're from? It's sort of like Sweden. Feel free to unmute your microphone if your English is not too bad. Or just type it in there. Right, I think we should keep cracking. We'll probably have some more uh, join oh, us later. Another, just give it one more minute. We're very keen to do this. Um, let's see what curveballs I can throw you tonight, Bruce. Did you see, <laughs> uh, did you see the new uh, video that I just put out? Or maybe I'll share that while we're waiting. Yeah, that's a good idea. Not even Renal seen it, I don't think. Oh. Okay. Kirsty and uh, welcome. Uh, if you, okay. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Hey. Okay. So um, thank you, everybody. Again, um, really appreciate um, you know your time. I know we're in all different country and zones. For us, it's evening, and um, I think in Egypt it's still morning time. So um, thank you very much for your time. So. What we're going to do today, I'm just going to share a PowerPoint and then we're going to go and um, actually do a bit of live demo and you can see the robots and Bruce is going to show you all about Minecraft. So let me just share my screen. Okay. Right. So we're just going to quickly have a look at what is Kai's clan and why. Um, then we're going to have the fabulous G um, Shelley Duncan. We're going to ask her some questions. We're going to look at Minecraft. We're going to look at Tinkercad, do some effects and animation and play in sandbox, show you some augmented reality, um, and then the dreaded product promotion stuff that we need to do. But hey, this is a big surprise. You can get some specials. And then we'll do some question and answers. So. Right, Bruce, can we introduce Bruce here? Unmute. <laughs> oh, I was just mining. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, those guys who don't know me, uh, my name's Bruce. Um, it's my fault you guys are here. Um, I started Kai's Clan about three years ago. I'm a real geek at heart. I love technology and I love seeing kids uh, you know, learning technology and really ramping up um, that big uh, ladder of, um, you know, tech that us adults can struggle with. So, yeah, I started it three years ago. I needed something better for my son to learn coding. 
and uh, I looked at all the other products on the market. I <clears throat> contacted teachers. I uh, did a lot of background research on what was being used in the classroom. And then I got a great team of uh, engineers uh, behind us um, and we started working on what today is Kai's clan, uh, incorporating multiple uh, different uh, products all in one set. So we call it a toolbox and I hope you uh, enjoy uh, what we can show you today uh, with Kai's clan and, and Renal and Shelly and hopefully Angela will share something as well. So yes, like Bruce is saying, this is a STEM toolbox. Um, and again, it's aimed at seven to 15 years of age um, students. And you choose the tool that's gonna suit your um, teaching. So we've got robot avatars, which is what we're gonna cover today. You can see it in virtual reality. We do augmented reality. Um, we're gonna throw some sensors in there. So internet of things. It's multiplayer coding. Students love doing their games. And we've even got some AI blocks. Um, but before we carry on, we're first going to introduce Shelley Duncan. She's the digital technology specialist teacher at Freeman's Bay. And they, Shelley has introduced and, um, sorry, she actually participated in the New Zealand school space race. So she's going to share some of her um, students work and um, yeah welcome and thanks so much Shelley. Awesome thank you for having me. Um, so I'll well so I'm Shelley I teach digital technology from um, at Freeman's Bay. I teach all year levels from five years old through to 10, uh, 10 years old. We're a year zero to six primary school in Auckland New Zealand um, and we've been lucky enough to participate in the Space Race Challenge um, and Bruce and Rennell have supported us through that as well, which has been awesome. So I will share um, one of the PowerPoints that uh, my students have been working on and that we've entered in. I'll just get that up now. There we go. Um, and just talk a little bit about how we use Minecraft to really sort of help um, bring this project to life for us. Uh, so we are, we're a Microsoft school, we use the Microsoft suite. Um, so our kids are already quite familiar with um, using Minecraft and our teachers use it quite a lot in, in class as well. Um, these guys, so we dabbled in Tinkercad, I didn't get quite as far with that. So these guys have made um, several structures to enter into um, their, their space race. Um, so these guys have got a, a water tower, They've made a main living area and they've also made um, sort of a supply, supply area, a supply room. Um, the kids, we, we, they're familiar with Minecraft. We made sure that they really understood the purpose and the reasoning behind their construction. So um, that they knew it was going to be exported out, which was something we had to learn together um, using the structure blocks within Minecraft. Um, and yeah, and, and how to import them into Kai's clan. But that was a really uh, easy, straightforward process for us, which was really cool. Um, so moving on through the PowerPoint, this is just some examples of some of their codes. Um, the Minecraft structures were assigned to different QR codes. And so their little um, Mars rovers got to go and visit their different supply stores, um, which were located at some of the platforms. Um, extra code. Uh, we managed to graph some distance as well, which was pretty cool using the onboard sensors on the robots. Um, so we were just able to export this into an Excel spreadsheet and then use that to generate um, some graphs just to see these guys. Obviously, Robot 2 didn't make it very far in this particular run, <laughs> but it's cool to see uh, how the robots have traveled around the mat and when they were taking long breaks like Robot 1. Um, yeah, so we've got some videos. These are available on um, the YouTube links. So there, I won't go through them all. Um, they were so engaged in the process. Uh, this is the um, AR view. You can see one of their, whoops, if I just jump back, you can see oh, down in the corner, there's one of their little Minecraft structures there. Um, and they, they, the robots move around and visit them. Um, we connected it, so in New Zealand, we've just um, introduced this year the um, additions to our technology curriculum. 
Um, so it connects with our computational thinking and our designing and developing digital outcomes. So the kids really, they were doing the computational thinking through the coding side, but the designing and developing was really rich as well. They had to think about, like I said before, what they were making, why they were making it, sketch designs, and then go into Minecraft and create them in there. Um, these guys got really um, into their PowerPoint <laughs> and making it personalized, which was really cool. So it's really collaborative for them. They can work in the same world in Minecraft as well. Um, so I'll stop sharing there. Um, yeah, for us, the question we had um, was um, setting up staff and students on Minecraft. And, and Renau, I think, has got a link that we can post. Um, there's a Minecraft education website, which is full of great resources for getting yourself set up on Minecraft. Microsoft are really supportive about um, helping you get that set up and running in schools as well. Um, so you can reach out to them, absolutely. Um, yeah. Was there anything else, anything I've missed? No, I think that was awesome. So if there's any questions, um, maybe just put your little hand up or ask a question. Um, we can unmute the mics. Um, but I've got a question first. So the collaboration, I remember the one time I came into the class and they were actually working from home and they're working together on it. So how was sort of the timing, this whole collaboration, which is a really unique feature of Kai's clan, you know, different roles. Can you maybe elaborate a little bit about that? Yeah, we, we unpacked that quite a lot at the beginning um, of when we introduced the project to them, we unpacked the idea that it was really a, a team effort to achieve this project and the time frame. So I had five weeks to work with my groups to try and achieve it, which was um, a, a, an hour a week was not enough. <laughs> um, but we, we got there in the end with a few extra sessions. Um, so they, they, right from the beginning, they knew that they had to, to plan together. And we had sort of a basic planning template that I gave them that had all the goals that they needed to achieve to meet the competition criteria. Um, but from there, how they allocated their roles. So we, we talked about how you could be a designer or an engineer or the coder and programmer. Um, and so they sort of, it allowed them to work within their strengths and their passions as well. Um, so someone who was strong at coding obviously put up their hand to take on leading the coding platform, whereas the kids who were really um, creative and crafty were like, no, no, we want to make, we want to design, we want to draw, we want to see our, our creations come to life. Um, so yeah, the collaboration was really cool and to see the, the final project come together was really amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, and we've actually, um, we've got another teacher that also entered into the space race, um, Angela from Sunny Hill School, also here in Auckland. Um, and maybe Angela, if you're okay to maybe just unmute your mic and maybe just, I know we don't have your PowerPoint, but maybe just share your experiences, um, how your students found, um, you know, working with Kai's clan. They absolutely loved it. Um, they had, yeah, they learned a lot about coding. There were a couple of the kids in the team that um, had some coding experience before but um, the rest of the team really sort of had just maybe open scratch a couple of times and didn't really have any idea of, of many of the coding concepts. So they learned a lot um, from each other. Um, and um, just, just when you came in and did the basics with them, Renal, they took that and ran with it. So it was, um, yeah, once they sort of had, this is how you open it and this is how you log in, um, they, yeah, took it, took it in their own direction and create, created a very interesting story um, for their um, entry. So yeah, it was really cool. Um, not just the, the real, um, I don't know, I guess you'd call it the, the true, true parts of the story, but they really got into the fictional side and finding aliens and things on Mars and, and how they were going to um, steal food and things off aliens and all sorts of things. So they had a ball with it. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And um, um, I think you guys used a sensor as, or a sensor too. Is that correct? Was that easy or not? Yep, yep. The, um, once we figured out how to plug it in the right place in the robot, um, <laughs> we, we managed to get the um, temperature sensor going. And um, we talked a lot about 
trying to get yeah trying to get um the area to get colder and then decided that actually it was easier to make it um hotter so we got out a hairdryer and um drove the robot around to the hairdryer and made that the hot part of mars and um yeah that was that was good fun um yeah so re really cool <laughs> Thank you very much. And we will be sharing all these projects on our um, Kaisland on our website as well once we have the finalists um, and the winners. And um, certainly we'll be um, also featuring it in our newsletters in, in the upcoming week. So thanks again. Um, has anybody else got a question for um, Shelley? Uh, probably. Um, I, I just. I just love data. So I'm a big data fan and um, I just love seeing the graphs of, of that because that's, you know, the data is probably a super important part of, uh, you know, the kids future because when they go into any job, uh, you've got to, you've got to be able to analyze, not just yourself or what you're doing and, um, you know, collecting data on sensor data or whatever it is. I think Shelley's data was on the movement of the robot. So, in Kai's clan, we collect all that data, how far it moved, how long it took to move, uh, plus all the sensor data. So being able to put that into um, uh, into Excel, I think, isn't that part of the, I'm not an uh, education expert, isn't that part of the outcomes for the curriculum? Yeah, that would definitely be um, so part of the designing and developing outcome is being able to sort of recognize how you manipulate and store data. Um, and yeah, like you said, it's going to be a, a really valuable skill set moving forward in any field. Um, yeah, and so it, it's dabbling. I'm by no means an Excel expert, and we had to do some um, lean learning, learning all together. Some of the kids were better at it than me, which was fine. I can put them in an expert position, um, which I had to do a lot during this process, <laughs> which was great. Um, but yeah, so that we learned that together. Um, it was a skill that we unpacked and, and managed to come out with some cool graphs. And I, think, I think that's a really um, good point you've just made because we've had teachers saying, but what if I don't, you know, I don't know how to code, what do we do? And we keep saying to them, you know, you don't need to know everything. You need to know how to allocate students, get them the robots, and they will fly. Um, and you will probably be able to learn from the students. And we have found that often that the students, you know, because they've used Blockly, they know gaming, um, and just rely on students, just ask them, you know, and work collaboratively on the project. So it's really cool to hear um, that that's the way you approach it as well. So. Thank you very, very much. So if, if there's any other questions coming up later, please just put it in the chat or we'll open up again later at the end for some questions and answers. So um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back and share my screen and I'm going to try and keep a PowerPoint as um, short and hopefully as exciting as possible. Okay, so thanks, Shelley. We've done some questions and, oh, yay, I don't have to talk too much. I am handing over straight back to the boss. So tell us, Minecraft and Tinkercad. Okay, so can you let me share my screen? Uh, so um, when I started, uh, let me put this back to my video here. So when I started uh, designing uh, Kai's Clan, purely by accident and I've learned some of my best skills by making accidents in life and purely by accident I came across the ability to uh, know the robot's position on the mat and because we knew where that robot was we could then put a virtual character in the same relative position so um, if you imagine you've got a soccer field um, and you've got coordinates in that field well, directly above that, we've got a virtual layer sitting on top of that. So I'm going to switch to my uh, mat video here. So here you can see I've got Kai's clan. I've got some uh, Lego. I can't remember which teacher gave me this idea of putting, putting mixing Lego with Kai's clan. It's fantastic. I've always been a fan of Lego. Um, so yeah, so what we do is we, what you can see is the mat view has all these QR codes. I'll switch my video back again. So um, what you can do with Kai's Clan is just print out these QR codes. Now, these QR codes are actually the identical codes that uh, Amazon Warehouse use on the floor of their massive 
uh, automated robotics center. So we use in, we exposing uh, kids to the same technology that's being used in a, a real uh, Amazon warehouse. So I've got this uh, cute little parrot. Um, he's going to be one of the pets I take to Mars with me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this uh, little QR code on on his on his uh, roof. So he's wearing this cute little hat. So that's going to help me because because once I know this QR code, we're going to be able to. Uh, create a virtual character for him. So let me place him on the mat behind me. And as you can see, I've got other uh, virtual elements. Uh, I'll just turn on the robots because I did forget to do that. <laughs> Excuse me, I am at home, so I'll foot today. So um, if you haven't met Kai, uh, he gives you a big Kai five. Um, this is uh, Kai's plan. Um, he's Lego compatible. Uh, he's also got one of those QR codes um, and we can also attach sensors to him. So it's not just a yellow robot as you'll see shortly. Right, let's get into it. Okay, so so I'm I'm in Minecraft now. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, sending over. Is that music from Minecraft coming through to you? A um, little bit. Is it annoying? Um, no, it should be okay. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this uh, Mars rover. Uh, into Kai's clan and I'm going to show you how to do that. Now I I am a very um, newbie or new in, um, in Minecraft so excuse me. Okay so what we've got to do is we've got to uh, put a bounding box. So uh, as you can see I've got this purple block and that's a create, um, what's it called? It's called a structure block. There we go. It's a structure block and this structure block creates a boundary around the model. Now, how do you get a structured block? Well, let me um, just switch over to, this is the, this is the uh, interface uh, inside Kai's plan. And uh, here you can see we've got the different icons for Minecraft, for Tinkercad, um, and we've got these apps. But in Minecraft, all you do is you enter this command, give at the structure block 10. So we've got the full instructions. We've even got a YouTube video on how to do this. So I've already uh, typed that command in there. Let's just go back in here. And now I'm going to just right click on that. And that brings up a 3D model of, um, of what is currently selected. So I need to make it bigger. Now, this is a great example on getting kids to learn coordinates. And if you see the map video uh, on here, you will see there's blue and red lines as well. And these are also the X and Y coordinates. So when the kids are doing this, they're not even aware, but they, they are learning about coordinates by, by figuring out how they could make their creations real. So I'm just gonna put in uh, some values here and see if we can get our uh, Mars Rover in here, so 10, 10, so that looks right, and we're just going to cut the floor off, so I'm going to make that one, I think, there we go, okay, so you can see now the whole Mars Rover is fitting in there, and let's uh, click export, right here, here we go, and we're going to click uh, save as Mars Rover, yes, so that's exported now, so what I'm going to do is turn off the elevator music. And inside Kai's clan, you can see here we've got our map view with all the different robots on it. And that is our parrot. Um, so these are these numbers, these unique numbers are the QR codes that you, we, I showed you earlier. So let's go and load that um, Mars rover. So we're gonna just click upload. I need to find it on my computer somewhere. 
download files driver, <coughs> drag that in. So this will go through like a pre-process stage uh, inside Kai's clan, just to get the file ready uh, for us to do. We do have this white arrow, so that tells us the direction that the rover must be going. Now, I also have on the mat my version in Lego. So not only are the kids designing in Lego their character, but they can also do the virtual element as well using tools like Minecraft or Tinkercad. So I'll click the photograph icon. Now that's going to send it over to Kai's clan. There we go. Oh, clicking too many buttons. Close that. Close that. Now, if we scroll down here, uh, we'll see. Oh, here we go. Uh, you can see our new model, um, and it's got a little green tick box on it. So we'll just call that a uh, Roby, and uh, approve it. So as a teacher, um, if students are loading their own models, uh, the teacher needs to approve this model before it can be used. So, okay, so we've got our rover, we've got, uh, and you can see all the different models I've got loaded in my classroom. Um, let me go and add something else. So I've got um, another Mars rover here. This, this is Tinkercad. If you don't know about Tinkercad, it is a absolute fantastic design tool. They're really nice to use um, and fairly easy. So in, in Tinkercad, uh, we've got the instructions on how to do this again inside Kai's clan. So it just says jump into Tinkercad and send to. So you click up here, send to, and you'll see in the list here, there's a Kai's clan logo. Click that. This prepares the design. And then click continue, and this will send this design over to Kai's clan. So remember all these 3D models. Uh, I think um, I think Angela was talking about using models as uh, buildings. I think no, Chevy was doing that. Uh, was talking about uh, you know designing buildings. So here we've got another Mars rover. Again, same process. Take a picture of it and send it through to Kai's clan. And I think it's really important as well when these models come into the teacher's account um, that you can obviously rename them um, and then approve them because we have, you know, you know, students, they can always try their luck and see what can they get away with. So um, the teacher has to approve it, but they can then upload different models, all the models that sort of sitting in the library. So apart from Minecraft and Tinkercad, you can also use Google Poly, which has got hundreds, thousands of models that you can go and choose from. And pretty soon, in the next couple of weeks, we are also um, adding Maker's Empire, which is another gallery of um, objects that you can use. So there's a whole range of things that people can either design or get finished products or finished models and add that to their robot avatars. So um, as you can see on our, uh, our, on our mat, we've got a few different robots here. So wherever the robots move on the mat, so if I just grab robot three and spin them around, you'll see on the mat view, he also moves around. So wherever the robots go, the virtual characters will follow. So let me load, um, okay, one of the Mars rovers that we just did. Uh, where is he? Okay, there's the Tinkercad one. I'm going to put that onto robot three. And this is just block coding. So you can see here we've got Sandbox. And Sandbox controls the virtual world, uh, which I will uh, show you shortly. So the, 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 the uh, Minecraft rover will make Robot 1. And I heard you guys talking about aliens. And uh, <laughs> so we can actually uh, get that to work. So here we go. We've got an alien there. And we'll put that onto Robot 2. Now, in a real sense, uh, each student would be doing this themselves. Uh, I'm just operating a teacher account so I can allocate them. And we've also got that parrot. I don't know if that wonderful parrot uh, created in Lego. So we could uh, create that as, let's see, a robot four, um, who's not on the robot, or who's not on the net yet. So robot four. Okay, 
So now what I'm going to do before I run this code, I'm going to open up our virtual viewer. So um, the nice thing with Kai's Glam is that you can do all of this uh, inside a browser, uh, inside a Chromebook, inside an iPad. It's just browser based. Uh, we do have, uh, let me just mute that. We do have um, apps for this as well. Um, and probably you guys, um, Sherry, you probably haven't seen the new Mars uh, environment. Uh, this is all the new Mars uh, environment with the rocket ships and stuff to help uh, start, you know, telling a story. So you can see all the different elements in here. Now, there's our, uh, there's our alien. So uh, let me just run that code. It has got some allocations on it already. So what you'll see now is there's another alien. There's a different robot, so a lot of stuff's happening. There's our Mars rover. So here, let's have a look at it. So that's the rover out of uh, Minecraft that we just took. And if we click here, we can see our alien is trying to destroy the solar farm generation system on Mars. Uh, here's the other robot uh, from Tinkercad. Now this is a multiplayer environment. So we can have multiple students um, all collaborating together inside this environment. Um, Right, so as a student, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna create a uh, robot for Renal, um, and uh, yeah, just put it in the chat if you would like to, um, you know, also control a robot from Egypt or from wherever you are. You can actually code these robots remotely. Um, so Renal, you gotta log in. Um, I'm just adding there that they can actually go and log into app.kaisclan.ai. Um, they can then, if anybody wants to, just let us know, and then you actually will log in as a student. So um, I have got a robot, Bruce. I can go and have a look if you carry on. Okay, so um, here we go. So we've allocated a robot to, who did I say, uh, Renal was three. Um, so uh, Renal's going to be moving uh, the robot number three. So let's just go and have a look. Where is three? So I'll turn on the information. So Shelly, also, can you see now we've also got the destinations now inside the map, so you can see where to go. That's um, cool. I like that. So robot two, robot three. So this is going to be Renal, so you can see a student name on it. Um, and we'll turn off some of that information and it gets a little bit busy. Right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna be the alien, which was robot one. So I'll get rid of that code and motion map movement. And then I'm gonna to move to robot three. So I'm robot one, Renal's robot three, and I'm going to move to, here we go, 2459. 2459. I wonder if Renelle's coding it so she knows what I'm going to be doing because I'm going to, no, I'm going to run away. Attack the <laughs> alien. Yeah, I'm going to the alien. Oh, she's already running away. Okay, we know where she's moved to so we can see it on the mat. Um, 3726. So we'll hunt the alien. 3726. And then what we can do in sandbox is we can do a whole lot of stuff and say, um, uh, beware area, something fun. And uh, we can do emoji on that and say, uh, do like a wow thing, put the effect. And we'll do like a shooting a bullet effect while we're driving. I'm a boy, I like guns. Um, okay, so I'll run that code and I'm just going to find uh, where's my robot over here. So, robot one is coming down. You can see the coordinates. You can see the robot. You can see the robot up in my camera view as well. There's a lot going on here. And uh, he's moving to those positions. We're crashing, as you can see in the video. The two uh, robots are having a battle off the Mars rovers. Uh, and here we go. 
beware alien i don't know why it's missing the white text and now i'm shooting bullets um, at uh, at the alien and you can see there's a crashed ufo there so as you can see this is very uh, collaborative uh, it's multiplayer it's online so you can have kids in a hybrid learning environment all working together how was that <laughs> That's pretty good, but don't stop sharing. I mean, there is so much more to Kai's clan. I think it is really good to, you know, we showed the sandbox. So it is, it's a multiplayer gaming environment. Students can interact with each other. They can only code their own robot physically, but they can interact with all the other robots or all the other QR codes. So you've seen all this um, wonderful 3D stuff, but um, I can see Bruce is getting ready to show and show the different mats and let's look at some of the augmented reality. Yeah, so um, what we can do is, I'm just going to go to the Mars, um, Mars environment. So here we go, uh, wrong classroom code, wrong classroom code. Always helps when you have the right classroom code. So I'll just go back to Mars again, scan the classroom code. There it is, there it is B. Okay, so once again, I'm on the iPad. This is our dedicated iPad app for viewing. Um, and again, you can see the Mars rover, you can see the parrot, and you can see all those elements. But we can turn on AR. So on the left-hand side here, we've got all these different controls. So camera control. AR control. So this is an augmented uh, view of the environment and I can show you that. So if I grab this robot and move it, you can see the parrot follows. So wherever the robot goes, that, that parrot will also go. So when the kids are coding, you can see the environment. Can you read your takeoff because I can hear the rockets about to launch. Oh, I was just getting excited for that. <laughs> so, um, and there's a dog waiting for me to play ball. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so let me show you some um, of the different maps. So it's really interesting because I saw um, Angela has just added there that, you know, with Kai's clan, it's really cross-curricular. And you can choose your topic. You can create your own projects. You know, we've got 40 projects already loaded there. And you can actually, once you've done all those, go and create your own projects and have some fun. So, yeah, this is the rescue run map. So this is just on a piece of paper. Um, and we've got all the elements again. Uh, you can see the parrot. You can see the Mars rover. Um, and we've got, there's a knight hiding behind the wall there. So this is like a multiplayer game, but the kids are doing a lot of coding in this. Um, so if I switch over, yeah, this is our smart city. Um, so as a teacher, you can create your own environments or you can use our predefined environments. And again, here's the interview. Uh, smart city. So if you're doing environmental challenges, you see there's a solar farm, there's a wind farm, uh, there's a car that's crashed over a bridge, uh, there's the Mars rover again. So all those elements in the parrot, all those elements can come through uh, to each environment that we have. And we've also got the warehouse and probably my favorite is the sandbox. Uh, which allows you to use your own, um, and this is very new, you guys probably haven't seen this yet, uh, but it allows you to use your own environments and build your own kind of stories inside here without any too much theming going on. And we've got a desert theme and a space theme inside here. So we don't do, um, you know, it's really good that you bring us up, Bruce, with the different mats. We'll just continue as creating more content, different mats and things. So we're not a subscription model. Um, you basically purchase the mats um, and then with that come all the different elements um, that you can then use. And that also helps with the cross-curricular. So, you know, like what Bruce was saying, 
on the risk you run met, for example, we've got schools that's doing Harry Potter. Um, on the warehouse met, we teach logistics, um, you know, automation, things like that. Obviously, Mars is about Earth and space um, subjects. So there's lots of cross cross curricular. We've got um, teachers that actually created lessons on fire rescue in Australia during Adelaide, the, the massive fires, and they did some lessons there. So um, we've got some COVID lessons, how to stay away from people. Um, so all of those. So it's really um, trying to cater for every level of student, um, every different topic um, that you can then go and use Kai's clan as well. Any questions so far? You guys are very shy, no questions. Okay. So uh, does, does anyone want to see me um, add like a temperature sensor and make the parrot fly? Why is that? Yes, please. Okay, so I'll share my screen again. Uh, Nothing especially for high schools. When they get to high schools, the reason we added sensors is to make it easy for students and to start getting excited about data. And sensors can be difficult, but we try with one line of code, make it really, really simple so that they've got the confidence that when they do go to high school and they need to do Raspberry Pi or they need to um, work with Arduino, that it is not um, so scary for them, that they're like, well, I've done this before, I can do it. And you'll see we even support BBC Microbit. So a lot of our schools are using Microbits as well. So you can actually use that. And I'm sure Bruce will tell a little bit more about that. So let's um, go ahead and add a sensor. And I'm going to show you how easy it is because I've done Arduino and um, yeah, doing a temperature sensor in Arduino, you know, it's a fair amount of work. That's a Good lot of learning, but it's not easy, and we need to give kids confidence. Here's a temperature and humidity sensor. Here's a little wire with a green plug on it. Um, here's a Kai robot, and on the back of the robot, you can see it's got a green and a yellow port on it. So I'm going to plug this in. So uh, let me do this. I need two hands. So the white, the white wire plugs into the back of the sensor, too easy, like that. The green uh, plugs into the back of the robot, like that. And then we just uh, connect the sensor to the top of the robot. Here we go. Okay, so that sensor has now been added to the robot. This is robot number four, as you can see on the QR code, number four. And then I just come into Kai's clan here and um, and then I click on the green one because it was a green sensor cable. Click that, click save. That robot is now sending temperature data. So if we click on robot for now, you can see the real time uh, temperature and humidity that's coming from this robot. Now, um, I think some someone mentioned earlier it is difficult to tame, change the temperature. Um, you can put the robot in the fridge. I've, I've done that and uh, it didn't work so well afterwards. Uh, but you, you know, you can like you can use a, a hair dryer to increase the temperature. But humidity is much easier. And it's also a great learning tool as well because uh, you know, higher humidity can, can, if you're in a hot air balloon, can make you go higher. So uh, what I'm going to do is try it out. So let's see if we can do that. So the first thing I want to do is um, let me just move this out of the way a bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, use that parrot. So I think uh, let's go and load that parrot. Okay, um, right, so we're going to load the parrot and we're going to put that on to number four. 
that's what I'm using. And then we're going to say to the parrot, we want him to fly at a certain height. So I'm just going to expert sandbox transform. And we've got this block here called fly at height. So I'm going to put this into a loop because what we're going to do is we're going to be constantly checking that humidity. And if the humidity goes up, then I want the parrot to fly higher. So I click on bits and we're going to go environmental and we're using the temperature sensor. So uh, that's, we're reading robot four's temperature, uh, actually humidity. So uh, robot, uh, yeah, let's do this. Uh, let's robot three on that. Let's just change things around. I'm gonna make the parent robot three because that's on the map. And I've got robot four sitting in front of me for some reason. that. So hopefully that makes sense to you because I'm getting the lost. Um, and then when it's flying, uh, we might want to do some effects. Uh, let's make it uh, rain. Yes. Your audio is coming and going. Sorry, you're cutting out. Okay, I'll try and speak louder. Okay, so um, we're going to play a firework, purple firework on Robot 3. Um, so let's just overview our code. We're going to load the parrot onto Robot 3. Then uh, we put this in a loop. Uh, Robot 3 is going to fly in the virtual world at a certain height. And that height is based on my humidity sensor. And we're going to constantly play fireworks um, you know, when that's, while that's happening. So it's very simple. Uh, let's load up our virtual view. And I think this is a very unique um, feature where you can actually interact the physical robot with virtual objects. So it's a physical sensor that's sitting on the robot and it's going to actually interact with the parrot in the virtual world. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's click run on the code. And the parrot. Okay, look, look the uh, fireworks going off. Look, look where the parrot is. So the parrot is sky high at the moment. Uh, we click on him. It's definitely flying. Now the height of this uh, parrot will change. So I'm going to breathe on the humidity sensor now. And the parrot should go higher very soon. There we go. So it's even gained in height. You can see how high it is uh, based on, uh, on the value. Um, so if I stop the code, the parrot stays there because that's the last command he received. Um, so I could also change this up a bit and say um, you can do like a loop, um, just a simple loop. And some variables, simple. <laughs> we'll get rid of the temperature sensor now, and I've just got a loop count, um, and I count from one to ten, and we'll put a delay in there. And so it's, it's going to count i from 1 to 10 by 1. Uh, i is a variable. It's getting a little bit uh, complicated here. And it's going to wait one second. It's going to count uh, 10 times. Let's run that. And you see the parrot comes down. And um, you, you should see now that the parrot gets, goes up by one, um, 1 centimeter at each time. So very, you know, another example of simple code. Um, before I finish off, um, I would like to show you some of the data uh, that we do have available in Heisplan. Um, so we've got the temperature, the humidity, you can see that to be collected in real time. We've also got the distance sensor. So as I move forward and backwards here, it's collecting that data. It's collecting the temperature data. And all that data can be dumped down to Excel open up Excel, you can see uh, this data. Now, Shelly had a graph there, so we could also do a very similar graph and just highlight two rows and say uh, insert, uh, insert, 
mention uh, in the chart. But the uh, audio is going again, Bruce. So I'm talking to you quite a bit in my voice. Um, my chart, here we go. So this is very similar to uh, Shelley's data uh, about um, how you can collect it and how easy it is. You just select the data rows and you can do this. So this is the distance sensor over time and what's been happening to it. But there's lots of more data in here. Um, so. And um, thanks, Bruce. And I see Ahmed, you've got a question. Yes. So um, with the um, starter kit comes about nine sensors, but with a classroom kit, there's 28 different sensors, including a water pump, a moisture sensor. Um, so there's a whole box of sensors that comes with um, each of this. So there you can see Bruce is just showing all the different sensors. So there's touch sensors, there's magnetic, there's pH, you know, there's the whole range is there and we will keep adding sensors as well. So there's a lot that you can actually do. Um, and also one of your comments was obviously about this whole, um, you know, bringing the toolbox together. So that's exactly what we aim to do. We looked at all the robots that was on the market and we took all the best features from them and we put it into Kai's clan so we can actually mix, you know, and have the AR and the VR and the sensors and stuff so that students have a, a purposeful learning when they do coding. So here, uh, oh, Bruce wants to talk about Microbit. Yeah, so we also support BBC Microbit. I think we support over 35 different sensors. Uh, you can water the plant and take the circuit board um, out of the robot, so you can open up the robot and uh, carry the circuit board with you with your mobile phone. And any data that you collect is sent back to um, your Kaiserplan interface. Uh, as well as we include these coding cards in the packs, uh, showing you how easy it is uh, to make some music or to code the robot or do AI and navigation. Uh, we've got lesson plans in here. Um, each mat has got its own lesson plans as well. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of fun with communities so you can share your own uh, projects. So, um, thanks, Bruce. So, we obviously, um, there's a whole series of these webinars that's coming up. So, um, you know, have a look at the others. Um, but if I just maybe can go back to and just um, I think we've got a couple more minutes. Just go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so there's our robot avatars. So a lot of fun that um, we can have with the robot avatars. Um, you saw the augmented reality. So there is a free app that you can then download for your iPad or your phone, um, and then look at the AR on your iPad. We've got the virtual reality. So we support um, Oculus Go or any of the Google Cardboard. So the Merge or any of those you can see. And you actually sit, so if you're the parrot, if you choose, hey, my robot's the parrot, you'll actually be sitting as a first person from the parrot's view. So it's a really cool immersive experience. We then have some products. I'll do this really, really quickly. So we've got two. So we've got the starter pack. So that is four robots and a rescue run mat, and it's got a box of sensors, and it also has a tripod because you have your QR codes and your phone that looks down on the mat. Um, we then also have the classroom pack. So that's probably the most popular one because this comes with 12 robots. It's got two mats, the warehouse mat and the Mars mat and a big box of sensors, two tripods. So everything is there ready for you. Um, you can then also um, purchase other mats if you haven't got those. So we've got the warehouse mat, like I said, Rescue Run, Smart City, Mars, and then the Sandbox mat. And if you, hey, I need to be one of those little TV, um, TV people, you know, if you order anything, from Kai's clan before the 30th of December, 
um, we will throw in a free create mat. And with this create mat, there's a big surprise coming up next year. We are going to start running a global chess challenge. Um, we're launching that during ISTE, um, and it's going to be in America and actually global that we're going to do it. So um, you can then play chess. So actually physically, you'll have your chess pieces. You can put a QR code on top. Physically, I can have a create mat here. Um, Ahmed, you can have a create mat in Egypt and we can play chess and verse each other. And then the students can actually go and create their own little avatars for their chess pieces and then animate them. So we're really looking forward to that competition. We've just finished the New Zealand space race and we're very privileged that um, David Lockett from NASA Education is our judge. And I think everybody is waiting to hear what um, another, he asked for another couple of weeks. So he said, it's so amazing. Um, and now it's time for questions and answers. Um, if anybody has got anything. Um, well, I want to say thank, big thanks to Shelley uh, for taking your time, uh, both for the two chess sessions uh, this morning and this afternoon. I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's lovely to see what you guys are creating and see some more interest happening. So yeah, well done. Thank you very much, everybody. And, um, you know, just email us if you need a demo. And oh, I forgot, we actually do free uh, PD training. <laughs> really, really important. We actually have 10 levels of certification. So um, once you do it and you want to learn more, we have um, 10 different levels that you can then um, sign up with us. And um, we'll, we'll take you through every, every, every little bit and pieces of Kai's clan. Uh, yeah, any final questions before we sign off? Uh, anyone? Uh, I know I can find the census. Right, I have to do something. Bruce is going to cringe now. I'm going to ask, so please can you share on um, Twitter or Facebook um, about Kai's clan? Um, and yeah, just, it's awesome. It's a beautiful product. And um, I always go, whoop, whoop. That's the fun of Kai's Clan. So thank you very, very much, everybody. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, guys. See ya.